Hello and mo welcome to Mike's Garage. On our last video, what we did is remove the top end from the 79 shovel head motor. Now we're going to continue the teardown. Now I might add that so far things appear to be in pretty good shape. Now we're going to have to check out and measure the cylinders real well, but it looks like a fairly fresh, fresh rebuild on the top end. So what we need to do now is remove the lifter blocks and open up the cam chest. But before we do that, there's one little trick I need to show. We think the lower end is in good shape. It feels good. The only real way to know, of course, is to tear it down completely, which is quite costly and quite involved. And if it's in good shape, it would be a shame to tear it apart. And all we're trying to do is run an exploratory on this motor and freshen it up if it's in pretty good shape. Now, one of the things we do that works, it's not, this is not a perfect science, it is what it is. You grab hold of a connecting rod, you lift up and you hold it to one side. The reason you hold it to one side is because there's end play in these rods. So you hold it to one side and lift it up and hit it with a rubber mallet. Right there, no sound. No sound. If there's any sound in there, it means it has a loose bearing. It has no sound. Now we take the other rod, do the same thing, hold it against the side, hold it up, hit it with a rubber mallet. No sound. So to me, this lower end, unless it has a problem I'm unaware of, it's a good gamble. So the next thing we want to do is to continue, pull the lifter blocks, pull the cam cover, open up the cam chest, and see what we've got. Now I cracked some of these loose to start with, but what we're going to do is pull the lifter blocks out, off, out, Pull all the screws out, and this bike has stock lifter blocks and stock hydraulic lifters. So we're going to carefully remove the screws, put them over in the parts bin with the other parts, make sure we get them loose. We're going to grab both lifters and lift, take the lifter block right out of the motor. Lifter block and lifters are now out. And things look pretty good. Now, the way you check these lifters is you grab hold of the roller and see if there's any play in it. Any play in it at all, up and down, and it's worn out. Now we'll check them all before we put them back in. Although we may just opt for some nicer lifters than the originals. So we'll get the other lifter block out. <clears throat> now taking the second one out is always easier. Now we grabbed hold of both lifters so I wouldn't drop them into the motor. Now I stick my fingers in here and lift this out. And it's coming with this gasket and there it is. So we'll put that aside. Now they're marked front and rear so they don't they're not uh, gonna get mixed up. The pistons I put with their respective cylinders so they can't get mixed up. Okay next thing is to remove the cam cover. The first thing is to take the bolt out that goes right through <laughs> goes right through the ignition plate and holds the uh, advance mechanism to the camshaft and if we take that out with its little ignition cam just makes everything else easier to get out so that's out of the way the next thing, get the camera in here a little bit. 
take these long screws here out there it is you have to be careful because that's an 832 screw it's real small you don't want to break it <clears throat> now if I get that out of there I can now pull the ignition plate out and the, the ignition advance mechanism which also appears to be in good shape very nice All right, all those things aside, now we can remove the cam cover. Now these big nuts that are sticking out here are pretty easy to remove because they're sticking out of here. And I cracked them loose to speed things up. Now there's a couple original screws in here, which are these two Phillips head screws. And they'll come right out. Now, people really destroy things a lot when they remove these cam covers and don't take any care in doing it. Now, I'm not being so careful with this hardware once I pull it out because it's all getting replaced. So the only thing left to do now is pull the cam cover off. You see it? There's nothing in there now except this is the end of the camshaft sticking out at us. And this is a tool I made about 30 some years ago. I understand you can buy them now. But this one seems to be working just fine. Let me show it here. Can we see that? We have two screws that go in place of the screws that held the ignition plate in there. And we just start them in there good. Being real careful not to ruin those threads. And once they're started in there well, you can screw them right in until they stop. Back the nuts out a little bit. Well, it's going in there quite a ways. There it is. It stopped. Okay, the other one, same thing. And it's almost in there all the way. Got to get it in good and far because you don't know whether the threads in there are good or not. <clears throat> now I'm going to get a flashlight on this so we can see where the center bolt goes. I'll put those nuts back in a little bit. Get that center bolt right there in the center of the camshaft. And once it's in, why well, we can we can move this in a little bit. Actually Back it off and move this plate in there just a little bit more to make sure we get a nice straight pull on it. And the little nuts back on there. And that's it. Now all we do is take this 9 16 wrench and tighten it up. Tighten up the tool carefully. Make sure all the screws are out. There's one screw still in there. That's why you need to look. There was one screw left and I didn't see it. And there it is. It's out. We tighten up the tool. <clears throat> Notice I have a pan under this. So I knew it was going to be full of oil. And just nice and easy as you please, it pulls this cam cover right off 
which really beats doing it with a screwdriver and gouging it up on the sides and making an ugly mess out of your beautiful motorcycle. Now before we put this back on, it professionally speaking, oops, we were doing this video when all of a sudden we had a little glitch with our camera. So we're going to continue right where we stopped. We were in the middle of removing this cam cover and it's coming right off with the super tool and there it is. Cam cover is all the way out. We can take the tool off of it now. And therefore remove things. Things. Okay, there's one screw. Come on. And there's the other. Now all we need to do is get this off of here just to be real. Actually we'll handle it better with this off. The main point of course was to be able to remove this, camp this cover without damaging it. Because this cover is not just a cover. It has bushings on the inside that line up with the cam and the pinion shaft of the flywheel assembly. There's the bushing for the camshaft. There's the bushing for the flywheel assembly. Now the cam cover is removed. I'm going to set it out of the way over here on a piece of cloth. It's going out with the polisher before we put it back on. Now we can easily remove the camshaft. And I looked at it and it has an H on it. The H tells me that it's a stock Harley cam. There's the H right there on the back, back uh, cam lobe. <clears throat> and here is the cam shim still in place. And that's about it. I think we're done for now, except for a bunch of inspection of parts. I'd like to replace the cam. I'd like to replace the cam bearing. Anytime I replace a cam, I prefer to replace the cam bearing. So let's get a look at it. Okay, there is the cam shim, and there is the thrust plate. They go right into there, and there is the cam bearing. Again, special tool to remove that. And we'll probably replace the camshaft because this one appear, appears to be fairly worn. So we'd like to get a new one and put a new bearing in there. We'll freshen up the top end, scrub it all, get new hardware, and it'll be a beautiful motor. So we'll go a little further with it. We'll see what we're going to do. And we'll be doing more videos on this same motor. And until then, see you out on the road.